Thank you. Hi. Uh, my name's Eleanor Bell. I'm a lighting designer, a light artist, and a fully qualified electrician. And because I have these technical skills, I also work as a technician to other lighting design, light artists and lighting designers, um, including the light artist James Terrell. And I had the opportunity um, to be responsible for the programming and installation of the lighting of two of his sky spaces here in the UK. Firstly, in 2015 at Tremonier Sculpture Gardens in Cornwall, and secondly at Kielder Water and Forest Park in Northumberland last year in 2018. So in this talk, I'm going to um, briefly talk about his work and then go on to discuss both of these projects. Um, firstly, the actual practical elements of the lighting installation, but then also the lighting experience, the, what you experience of the lighting programme at dusk. So many of you will be familiar with his work, but for those of you who aren't, he, was, um, he is an American light artist born in 1943, and he first came to prominence in the 1960s as part of the Light and Space Group of Artists in California. And prior to studying art, he um, studied perceptual psychology, and that has informed his practice ever since. And he says, I use the material of light to work in the medium of perception. In the work I do, there is no object because perception is the object. I want the actual act of seeing to be the object of attention. So whilst artists have always um, depicted light in their work, what's, what makes his work different is the, that he strives to put the viewer in direct contact with light rather than being an intermediary. So in his early works, he started working with projected light. So the one on the left um, is a 2D cutout projected into the corner of a room. Now, I've seen this work, and when you first look at it, you can see very clearly that it's a 2D plane. But then as you look at it and your eye relaxes and your gaze softens, it suddenly pops out into a 3D object. And once you've seen it in 3D, it's really hard to go back and see it as a 2D plane. So then on the right, Virga is part of his Veil series, and that's where he started experimenting with natural light as well as artificial light. Um, and he created a slowly moving curtain of light, which also had this palpable sense of volume and appeared to divide the room. So in 1974, he was looking for a new studio space, and as he was an avid pilot, he took to the skies and scoured the region and found the Rodan Crater um, in the Painted Desert in Arizona. And he's been shaping this ever since into a naked eye observatory. It's, it's near to its um, final phase of construction. Once completed, it will have 21 viewing spaces and six tunnels and it's a from which you can view the sky during the day and at night, and it really is a temple to light and the cosmos. But rewinding back to the 1970s, when he first experimented with cutting into the fabric of the building um, to introduce natural light into his work, this led on to his um, Sky Space series. So what is a Sky Space? Well, it's a chamber with a very precisely cut aperture, which can be round, oval, or square. It's often accessed through a corridor, which magnifies the sense of enclosure when you then enter the sky space. It has sloping seats around the edge, which encourage you to sit back and gaze up at the sky. So there are almost 100 of these worldwide, five of which are here in the UK. So Kielder and Tremonier, which I'm going to talk about, um, and then also Yorkshire Sculpture Park, Houghton Hall in Norfolk, and on the Craig and Arrow Estate in Scotland. So Kielder and Tremonier, I'll just flick to the next slide so you can see them both. Um, they have many similarities as they're both in remote locations and are off-grid, so power, providing power was an issue. 
Um, they're both accessed through a corridor and they have, both have a rugged stone exterior and they both use white light instead of coloured light, which really suits their rural location. So the main difference is the shape. Um, Kielder is a cylinder with a, with a flat roof and, um, and a, a round aperture, whereas Tremon, and, and also the benches are concrete, so that gives it a really austere feel. Whereas in Tremonir, it's an ellipsoid. So the walls and ceilings are curved and the aperture is an ellipse. And the benches are a white fiberglass. So it gives us this really smooth feel and it's like being inside a giant egg. So how did I come to be involved in this? Well, five years ago, um, in September 2014, I got a phone call completely out of the blue asking if I could help with the lighting for a James Trail Sky Space in Cornwall, as they needed someone who had the skills to install and program the lighting. So naturally, I leapt at the chance. Um, I had experimented with light during my art degree and in fact written my dissertation on the work of James Turrell, and this in part led me to becoming a lighting designer. Um, so this was an opportunity too good to be true. So also, he was coming for a site visit in two weeks, and it was very urgent. So I dropped everything, and the next day I met Neil Armstrong, the owner of Tremonier, on site, and he explained the brief to me, uh, which was firstly to throw light evenly around the upper part of the sky space, secondly to design a program that varied in light levels and also took about 45 minutes, um, and that could also be switched on um, automatically at dusk. And because there was no power, it needed to be a low power system with solar panels. Um, so we ex started experimenting with the LED strip and um, to work out the position. And in fact, it's set at an angle behind the benches so that it throws light across the space and then that bounces the light around because if it had been flat above the benches, it would have created this hot spot and with shadows above. So we worked out the angle. We decided on warm white LED strip, 2,700 Kelvin, um, and it's IP rated because it basically is an outdoor structure. Um, and yes, it's 15 watts per meter. So that gave the required brightness. So I set to work, I installed it, and I rigged up um, a temporary leisure battery and also a digital dimmer so that I could precisely vary the dimming levels. So he arrived for the site visit, and um, 50 people were invited to the lighting tests, which I hadn't quite expected, so that was rather nerve-wracking. But anyway, at dusk, um, I turned the lights on, and he would say to me what level he wanted it at and for how long and played around with it over the time. And I took notes and this formed the basis of the lighting program. So he then came back in April for another site visit and tweaked it again and we looked at the program. And after that, I installed a digital lighting program and also solar panels ready for the launch in June 2015, which was a big success. Um, and also it was set up to an astronomical timer clock so it automatically came on at dusk. So what do you experience? What is this lighting program? What do you experience? Well, twilight is the, this magical hour and the show really heightens that experience and it's about the interplay between the naturally fading light outside and the artificial light inside, and what you see and experience as those hues change. Here on the left, these are um, images of the lighting shirt Tremonier. So on the left is um, a time-lapse sequence um, by someone on an iPhone, which does, it does um, change for the lighting, so it's not entirely accurate, but it gives you an idea. And on the right, these are the main phases of the lighting sequence. So what happens is the light starts at 100% and then it dims down and then over the 45 minute period it comes up to 100% again. But the, t the speed it does this varies 
and James Terrell, he orchestrates these changes in tempo so that sometimes things happen very slowly, almost imperceptibly, and then at other times it's really quick and it's almost like this grand crescendo. So on the right, you can see the four images. The top left is the sky space during the day. Then the second one on top right is about probably 15 minutes into the show where the walls take on this wonderful pink peach hue and the sky is a mid-blue. And then on the bottom left, as the sky darkens outside and the light inside dims, um, the sky becomes this midnight blue and the walls are cream. And then right at the end, when the light is 100% again, the walls are a stark white and the sky is this thick black. And what's really amazing is that when you look at the space, the aperture, it can appear solid, sometimes concave, sometimes convex, and then suddenly a cloud will pass or a bird will pass over and it will completely throw your sense of depth as you can then see through the space again. And the colours, if you exit the sky space during the programme, the sky looks grey, and yet when you come back inside the sky space, it presents in these wonderful blues and the walls appear to change colour and yet the light is not changing colour, it's warm white throughout, only the light levels are changing. So it's really our perception of the colour that's changing and this is individual to each viewer. So in 2016 I was um, contacted by Peter Sharp from Kielder Water and Forest Park um, to, uh, as their lighting needs an upgrade. It had been originally stall installed in 2000 and it was fibre optic lighting and it never really been bright enough and also it was at the same light level the whole time. So it didn't have this variation and this dynamic quality. So again, we went through the same process, um, working out the positioning of the LED strip, looking at the programme. And this time, James Trell, he wanted a more amber light. So we went for um, 2000 Kelvin extra warm white LED strip. And you can see here, these are photos of the launch last year. The one on the left is the lights have literally just been turned on. It's still quite light. And then about 20 minutes in, you've got this wonderful yellow, orange light and mid-blue sky. So here, the, the brief was slightly more complex because the site is open 24 hours a day. And as it's further north, the winter daylight, there's less of it. And so in order to keep the solar panel requirement down, um, we didn't want it coming automatically on every dusk, only when someone entered the space. So it was set up firstly um, with solar panels that track the sun to really maximise the weak winter light. And secondly, it was triggered by a movement sensor, which set the programme going, set, turned the lighting on when someone entered the space. So if they come in 20 minutes after sunset, the programme will go from 20 minutes after sunset so that you always see it in the correct sequence in relation to sunset. So what does chasing the twilight mean? Well, there's this moment in the program when the aperture appears to vibrate, the edge of it, and there's this frisson between the two colours, and it's completely mesmerising. And this is what James Terrell calls chasing the twilight. And it happens as the light outside fades and the artificial light hits this sweet spot and if the lighting level is constant, it will happen once during that 45 minute period after dusk. But what he does by varying the light levels is that he's able to extend the period that it happens and also make it happen several times during one sequence. I've seen this many times and I never tire of watching it through all the run throughs and everything. Um, it's a completely individual experience because it's immersive and I really urge you to go and see it for yourselves because it's very hard to describe through images and words and really it's for, for you to, to experience it yourselves. So just to summarise, it, it's been a real privilege to do the electrical design installation for the lighting for both these sky spaces. And working for James Terrell has really helped me develop my own practice um, 
and to understand the importance of light and how powerful it is when it's used as a material in its own right. So if you're interested in either of these spaces, here are the details. Look at their websites. There's all the details there. And thank you very much for listening.